Hey everybody, I am 22 Tiger Dude and welcome to my final animation domination video. Also, you guys, stick around for my very end of the video because I do have a little, I guess what you could say, update. So please stick around for the end of the video. We start off with number one, Cleveland Show. And the Cleveland Show is canceled, thank goodness. While this season has been at least watchable, I really, really hope for the day that this show would get canceled so Cleveland could go back to Family Guy. Please let Cleveland be back on Family Guy by next season. We all want that, right? And the final two Cleveland Show episodes with this one. This one is about when Crazy Train, Cleveland's father, he's acting really weird. And so when they go over to Dr. Fist, they, uh, Dr. Fist says that he is developing something called Dementia. And then in the subplot right here, it's about when Junior and Rallo, they observe the construction site near the park. They see this cherry picker that's broken because the construction workers were going to throw it out. So you know what happens? Rallo and Junior, they get it working and they take it around the city. You know, they are pretty much are doing good deeds. They are helping people. And that's your subplot. How was this episode overall? It's not that good. I didn't think it was that great. Like, it wasn't awful, but it, it needed improvements. That's really as best as I could go. With the main plot and the whole crazy trait thing, you know, the it's a nice idea, like... It was uh, funny how Crazy Train's just like acting all crazy with his little dementia. You know how his be behavior has been. And plus, we do get really nice uh, Crazy Train and Cleveland bonding. And it's nice to see Cleveland have that bond with him. But then, of course, once it's all done, he's back to being the same tough, strict douchebag father he has always been to Cleveland. And... The episode starts to go more downhill than it already was going. Like, it still wasn't that great even when it started out with him uh, being all crazy and weird. But it was still, like, enjoyable. I got some laughs out of it. And in all honesty, I wish they showed more of this plot. The subplot with Rallo and Junior going around all over the city and doing good deeds for people. I think it was nice. Plus... We do get a nice cameo from Rallo's old man friend, Murray. And sadly, this is going to probably be the last appearance we saw Murray since this episode and the next uh, Cleveland Show episode I'm about to review are the final episodes. So even though it was a cameo, it was good to see Murray at least one last time. So it was nice. And I enjoyed his cameo. That was It was one of the funniest parts, in my opinion. It was nice for them to do good deeds. Like, there was a little girl that thought the cherry picker was actually a giraffe. Because, you know, they're going by in the nighttime. So it was nice. It was funny. And I thought it was more enjoyable. Sadly, not there too much, though. I think my, I would have enjoyed this episode a little more if that had a more bigger role than the main plot had. When it gets to the finale of the main plot... Uh, it's really not that impressive. Uh, I and then just how they ended it, it's just all like boom and and yeah, there wasn't really an ending to this. All they did was just really rush the finale and not really give it a proper ending. I'll go ahead and give this episode a five point five out of ten. It's not very good, but it's enjoyable at parts. This is officially the last episode of The Cleveland Show. Okay, so 
I hope everyone's happy. I'm definitely happy. Even though this was a watchable season, I'm not going to lie there. I want Cleveland back in family, guys. So I'm glad this is the last episode. Please do not let the show be revived because that's just going to make my uh, expectations go down. Cleveland and Donna get overwhelmed with the kids' schedules, like dropping off at school or taking them to soccer, you know, that ordinary stuff. So they do this thing called Wheel of Family, where they take the family over and who and they spin the Wheel of Family, and whoever points that, they get that family. Like, for example, Freight Train got Junior, and so, Junior, that's where we go into the subplot of this episode. He joins the YMCA. I know. This final episode of the Cleveland Show, it was not good. It was worse than the first episode I reviewed of this final night. Much worse, actually. Much, much worse. Actually, so much worse that it's not even funny. It was. <laughs> I just didn't like this episode. This is a terrible episode. I... <laughs> Come on. If it's a final episode of The Cleveland Show, even though it wasn't meant for it to be a final episode, at least try to do something decent out of it, you know? Is that so hard to ask? I mean, you had a watchable season. This final season is was watchable. It had its really great episodes. It had its decent episodes. It had its okay. And it had its, well, not so great. But it was watchable overall. And to end it like this, it sucks. <sighs> The um, junior plot, the subplot, I just thought it was ridiculous. It was so weird. The Wheel of Family thing, I just thought it was pathetic. It was lazily written. The writing overall is just terrible. The characters didn't make it even better. And then, of course, we get the auntie who farts. And it's like... Yeah, see? Shows how good this episode was, right? <laughs> oh, boy. There were a few funny moments. Like, honestly, the funniest moment was the ending of the subplot with uh, Junior doing his strippy, his dancing on the pole. Oh, and the fact that Freight Train was actually very impressed by it. I'll admit, I actually got a very good laugh out of that part. And there were a few more other laughs, but that one overall was the funniest. We didn't get any final lines from Tim the Bear or any of Cleveland's other friends. They were there, but they didn't really have a line to say. Actually, not all did they say a line because they were only there at the ending of the episode. The Cleveland show, I'll admit, even though it's not the greatest show Seth MacFarlane has made, in fact, it's the worst show he's made, I'll admit... This season was watchable, and um, Seth MacFarlane, I hope you'll put Cleveland back on Family Guy. Please don't revive this show. I think everyone's already had enough of this show. So, as my final words to the Cleveland show, even though the final episode was shitty, thanks for a watchable season. I hope to see you back on Family Guy next season, Cleveland. And the final episode is going to get... A 2 out of 10. Wow. Wow. It's a serious finale everyone is going to forget. Now I am on to one of the season finale of The Simpsons. We still got a second one, but let's see how Simpsons episode number one of the season finale goes. All right, so the plot for this episode is about when the guys, they all have this lottery. They won a lottery. So they're celebrating in honor of the guys winning a lottery, the four of them 
want to split the cash. So they trust Carl to go cash in the money. But then when Carl never comes to Mo's bar and uh, he just dis he ditched them basically, as you can see, the Homer, Lenny, and Mo they get curious about where Carl might have gone. And then they discover the mystery about Carl and about him going to Iceland. That's right. And in case you guys are wondering why I played that Sigur Ross, I hope I pronounced that right song, because the Icelandic band Sigur Ross guest star in this episode, and I really enjoyed that. This is the only song I've heard from them, to be honest, but I just love that song so much. I could listen to it forever and ever, and it would get, <clears throat> still get to me. How does this episode go? I love it. This is, without a doubt, one of the best offerings of an episode the season offered. It's really, really great. Alright, first of all, there's not really too many episodes of The Simpsons that focus on Carl. This is a Carl focused episode. We get more backstory behind Carl. We learn more about Carl, where he was raised, his path. I enjoyed the mystery here. I enjoyed how Homer, Lenny, and Moe, they were going solving and this Iceland. And I really don't want to spoil too much of this episode for you guys, but it's really interesting. I love the episode. And yes, it does have funny moments, but the reason I love this episode so much is just how well written and well constructed they did with this episode. And people will give The Simpsons too much crap. Like, I mean, some people, they give it too much crap. And of course, while I respect their opinions, um, when I watch episodes like this, and still watching the older episodes, because I love both the older and the new episodes equally, it has me wondering myself, why do people give the show so much crap? I just loved how it was written. I loved the story behind Carl. Well, there's a lot of character development. They added a nice depth of character development here. It was like Futurama. You know how Futurama has uh, more of that character development stuff than The Simpsons? Well, I felt like this Simpsons episode uh, succeeded in character development and it's those kind of episodes I want to see from The Simpsons. Like, Futurama gets a whole lot more of that than The Simpsons, but I mean... Just how it was handled and how it was written. I, I was blown away. I was really impressed by the writing. Funny jokes all around. Funny humor when it needed to be. And uh, th they were humorous at the necessary times. It would be dumb. It would be clever. I, I just loved the episode overall. And I would really recommend it. And I don't want to spoil this for you guys. Because we learn more interesting stuff about Carl. And the fact that he went to Iceland. And... That's really nice. I love the episode. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. Loved it. All right, we get the final episode of the season, but we have the next animated Dungeon season. So congratulations to the Simpsons still going on. Season 25 next season. Wow. Can't believe it. 25 seasons. Alright, well let's focus on the final episode of season 24. That one is called Dangers on a Train. This episode actually guest stars Seth MacFarlane. You know, the guy that has three shows, well with Cleveland show being cancelled, two shows on Animation Domination now. He's the creator of Family Guy, American Dad, and the show that got recently canceled for good, hopefully, The Cleveland Show. I will honestly say, while I don't think it's as good as The Saga of Carl, the episode I just finished reviewing right now, I really like this episode. I think it was really enjoyable. I really liked Seth MacFarlane's uh, guest appearance in here. He played an overall very enjoyable character. His, you know, Seth MacFarlane voice matched his character well. 
And the plot of this episode is that Marge was looking for a cupcake website, but she mistakenly ends up with a married couple to arrange affairs, and the character's name is Ben, and so Ben, without his wife knowing, has actually been meeting up with Marge and all that stuff, and he's like starting to have feelings for Marge. And meanwhile, Homer and the guys are building this train from a long time ago in their past, because Homer wants to surprise it for uh, him and Marge's wedding anniversary. So that was a nice plot too. I really like that plot a little more actually. But the main plot is really the plot with Marge meeting up with this character Ben. She mistakenly found on this website. I really like the plot. My issue with the episode though was um, I didn't like the fact that Marge was going behind Homer's back. Like it was really wrong. Like. You could tell Homer really cares about Marge, and obviously if he's doing that, it's because he wants to surprise her. And although I know she didn't know, it wasn't right for her to go behind Homer's back. That's really the biggest and only issue I have with this episode overall, just the fact that Marge is going behind Homer's back, uh, uh, meeting up with uh, Ben, the one voiced by Seth MacFarlane, while he is going in and out every day just to go... Uh, fix that train, build it back to life, just to surprise his own wife on their wedding anniversary. Now come on, that takes serious commitment. The fact that uh, Seth MacFarlane's character Ben and Marge are getting into this TV show, it was funny. It added a lot of humorous moments. This episode is very funny. I thought it was well written with the storyline too. And overall how it tied into the end. And if you guys like Seth MacFarlane, then you'll enjoy his guest star voice appearance here. And I'm going to give this episode, the final episode of season 24, a 9 out of 10. Okay guys. It's now Family Guy. This one, and then the last one, and then that's the ending of my animation domination. So, let's get this going. And this Family Guy episode, it's another Road to episode where Brian and Stewie are the main stars of it. And it's about when, Ry when Brian wins Celine Dion tickets to Las Vegas, no one could really go, so of course, who does Brian bring? Stewie. So then, of course, you know how Stewie has that transporting device? Well, Brian and Stewie, they go into that transporting device, but there's actually duplicates of Brian and Stewie, so what happens is that Brian and Stewie see each other differently, and uh, it was actually pretty clever how Seth MacFarlane handled that, actually, because... There's a Brian that's with a duplicate Stewie, and there's a Stewie with a duplicate Brian. And I really liked that. That was really cool how it handled. The episode overall, though, it's okay. It's an okay episode. It's disappointing, yeah. It's not the worst Row 2 episode, though, but it's also definitely not the best either. There's enjoyable moments at times. It's a, uh, it's funny at times too. Really my flaws with this episode is that it could have been constructed a little more better. That it was a little boring at times. I think the steam of Brian and Stewie, them being in Vegas, the steam was starting to just, you know, lose it. And then of course, as it gets close to the ending, it honestly starts to fall apart for me from there. It's, uh, it's still a little bit enjoyable, but you know, it's just, uh, slip and fall down very slowly but you know it's still okay i'm gonna give this episode a six out of ten we now have the final family guy episode of season 11 okay you guys remember stick around for the very ending of my video uh after this but anyways in this Family Guy episode, No Country Club for Old Men. So this Family Guy episode is about when Chris, he hits on a girl named Amanda. 
and she scores an ever and he gets an invitation from her for the family to the Barrington Country Club and she is a member there so Chris and the family are invited but then you could kind of guess where this is going you see Carter there but Carter gets very annoyed and pissed off that Peter and the family are at the Barrington Country Club because Carter has been dying to be a member of this country club for such a long time and they, he's not liked, which is completely understandable why. So Peter invites Carter as a guest. So just like Roads to Vegas, it's okay. It could have been better. I mean, it wasn't really structured well. It was boring at times. It has its problems like Carter was really starting to get on my nerves too. Especially once it hit the ending. I'm not going to spoil why, but uh, the ending pissed me off. But the storyline overall, it was fine. There are some stupidly funny uh, moments. Like where Peter acts like a child. I mean, it's not the first time we've seen him act like that. But I mean, there's this one scene where he's talking to this little kid. And oh my gosh, it was one of the most hilarious moments of this whole episode, honestly. The episode started off as a 10 out of 10 in my opinion. Because, you know, because uh, for the first six minutes, Peter has an art harmonica stuck up his ass. Yeah. <laughs> But then Peter discovers a talent where he could play the harmonica through his ass. So now he makes it through America's Got Talent. But then you could probably guess how that plot ends. Which is the harmonica finally slipping out of his ass. And then he got kicked out of America's Got Talent. That plot ended from there. Then that's when we moved on to the Barrington Country Club plot. And I love that. And I love the harmonica plot. And then once that started, that's when the episode's all like, nope, not 10 out of 10 anymore. A disappointing finale for a season. Definitely not as bad as the Cleveland shows. It's a lot better but uh, than that. But still, it's disappointing. I'll give the final season 11 episode of Family Guy the same rating as Roads to Vegas, unfortunately, a 6 out of 10. Stick around for the ending of my video now, as I do have a little something to say. Subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Comment and give me your thoughts on each of the Animation Domination premieres. Like and share this video. I hope you all enjoyed this, and don't forget that I will always have... TAGA POWER! Okay guys, this is going to be my little update and Homer's here because you guys aren't going to see him for a while and he wanted to be on here one last time. Isn't that right, Homer? Don't! Stay. Bad Homer. Bad Homer. Since this is my final Animation Domination video, I want to ask you guys, because Animation Domination is going to return in September or October of this year to start off the 2013 to 2014 season. Okay, and so I want to ask you guys this. Do you want me to come back uh, to do Animation Domination? It's like, I'll still be here on my channel. I'm still going to do movie reviews, my TV show reviews, my SpongeBob SquarePants episode reviews. I'm going to still do all that stuff, but I mean, in terms of, like, animation domination, do you want me to come back to do reviews of this when next season premieres? Or do you guys think I should mark this as my final animation domination video? You guys let me know down below, because I only want to do it if my subscribers want me to do it. If you don't want me to do it, I'll stop. But uh, I do want to know your guys' opinion, though. Since there's no animation domination this summer... I'm not doing Animation Domination High Def. I, I'm sorry. I'm not going to watch that. But to, I guess what you could say, kind of not really replace, but make it my summer version of Animation Domination, except it's just going to be one cartoon with new episodes every week. And for the summer, I am going to review new episodes of Futurama. Yep. That's right, you guys. So, 
There may be no animation damage review for the summer, but there is going to be new episodes of Futurama to be reviewed by me all summer long. So look forward to that, you guys. Watch my reviews and all other stuff on my channel. Look forward to that, and thanks for supporting my animation domination videos.